I've made and continue to make the unwavering assertion that there is no more inflamed metastasized boil on the buttock of the American Republic than our judiciary system. What blows me away in perpetuity is how the average is being the average as I'm constantly anticipating the case to disprove that contention. I mean, at a bare minimum, the countervailing example that proves my rule, yet it seems every day I roll the desiccated hooker corpse off my body and emerge from my hyperbaric chamber, there's piping fresh fuckery afoot to ratify my original conclusion. Take this past week when twin unelected judges from unflaggingly liberal metropoli San Francisco and Chicago within mere hours of one another, first dropped all hate crime charges in the famed Black Lives Matter abduction case, whereupon, you may remember, a mentally disabled man was kidnapped and beaten while the perpetrators literally shrieked on fucking film, fuck whitey. Big fuck Donald Trump, nigga. Fuck white people, boy. <laughs> fuck fuck white people, bitch. boy. <laughs> While back in Frisco, a lone fuckbag forestalled the immigration ban twice upheld and well within the president's purview to institute, upending the wheel of motherfucking millions in the process without the faintest fucking electoral oversight. You may want to let this one cool on the mantelpiece a while, I assure you, this rant's been percolating for a spell. <laughs> I will now directly quote from my Arpaio rant. Our criminal justice system has become a lumbering, monolithic ham beast gorging itself on the blood of guilty and innocent alike, utterly unencumbered by electoral oversight, generations removed from consequences of any description that now exists solely for the parsimonious purpose of unerringly perpetuating itself. Yet enamored as we all are by Nancy Grace Goatfucks or baying for baby killing ass Casey Anthony's eternal soul, we all too often overlook the genuine iniquities perpetrated against you and I every hour on the hour. Now, look, I'm not saying we haven't all at some point witnessed an outright injustice in a courtroom, glowered in mute despair as the guilty walk free. Anyone who witnessed the O.J. Simpson verdict is well acquainted with the feeling of abject frustration and ineffectuality when the wheels of justice grind to a violent halt, but there's a price to be paid for our guilty until proven innocent pro-defendant judiciary system, and every time a murderer walks free, a rapist gets off and then gets off with a mere assault charge, or a perjuring ass former president walks away with a hundred thousand dollar slap on the wrist, understand this, the founding fathers... Well, they're collecting their due. You want a perfect solution? Drink a glass of fucking Ovaltine. Because the founding fucks picked their poison and Paul Revere the fuck out of here long ago. Courtrooms are monuments to mankind and thus a footstone to our fallibilities as well. When constructing our court system, the founding fathers, themselves only a bunch of Anglo asshats and powdered fucking wigs after all, were presented with exactly two choices. Adopt the old English model of guilty until proven innocent, or stand that shit on its head, and as with all things in our prepubescent republic, skew it toward the citizen. The founders, for better or for worse, came down decisively on the side of the citizenry. In short, shitty verdict's gonna happen. That's what appeals are for. What we absolutely can ameliorate, however, is the outright absence of any and all electoral oversight. Pop quiz, Rageholics. How, my friends, oh fucking how, do you recall? a Supreme Court, or even a goddamn district judge. Anyone? Anyone. Straight the fuck up. I could not fucking tell you, and I originally went to school for political science. I'm certain the machinery exists, but if so, it hasn't been implemented since before Pelosi's last period, much less as a buttress against the sustained sodomy session the Supremes have subjected our found and fucking document to. Justices Warren and Thurgood Marshall exchanged interpretation of the Constitution for drafting their own invisible fucking amendments to it without once being in danger of finding themselves slave to the whims of the unwashed stupid masses, and they wore the robes to a ripe retiring age regardless, worshipped till time immemorial by the grey ponytail turtleneck triad who inevitably occupy every professorship in the hoary halls of academia. I mean, what do these self-aggrandizing thunderfucks have to do? Give the Teddy Memorial a titty twister? They're unelected, and they're making laws here! And I say this as someone who doesn't believe in an abortion ban, not on moral grounds, but on the basis that no government should be big enough to have a thing to do with your fucking fallopian tubes, but straight the fuck up. Roe versus Wade? Illegal as shit! So unconstitutional, in fact, that the most liberal member of the Supreme Court, former ACLU lead counsel Ruth Bader goddamn Ginsburg, has penned multiple motherfucking screeds on the subject, arguing not only its illegality, but that it's set your snatch rights back decades by giving the pro-life crowd something to perpetually point to in perfectly constitutional rejoinder. And you know what else? 
She's A1 fucking right for once. You'll never have the abortion amendment you elitist ass had shit illegally fucking passed to begin with because you already broke the law to get what you want. And for that reason, the controversy will never goddamn abate. Don't believe me? Ask the Riri retinue, no doubt, arrayed in my comments section as I speak, shrieking about the issue because they missed the point of this abortion aside by a motherfucking mile due to the fact that 40 years removed from the original decision, the mere mention of Roe versus Wade still sets every Every nerve in five counties affray. And by the by, there's a cautionary tale in there for the fuckwits who hailed the Supreme Court's gay marriage decision with piping hot arcs of celebratory splooge a few years ago. And I recognize and understand the inevitable counter-argument that, you know, judges are unelected to preclude the process from devolving into an inexorably corrupt, shady as shit showpiece, but I guess I'm just failing to see how appointing a politically connected pissant, forever slave to the positions of the public servant that originally appointed him, in any way fucking forestalls that. How many Clinton appointees are fucking conservative. Anyone? Didn't think so, shithead. It's anti-democratic. It's anti-republic. It's an anachronistic artifact from the British class system, and so-called libertarians defending it on that basis is full-on fucking laughable, which, by the way, gives it something in common with your goddamn party. Look, we're slave to a system of checks and balances. Congress can override the president. The president can override Congress. The unelected jackasses in judiciary can override both, but who in Hillary's pear-shaped pantsuit overrides their asses? The president appoints them, but after that? Fuck electoral oversight, they're a college-age cunt in Cancun with daddy's Volvo and a spray tan tight end named Ted perpetually a wine cooler away from taking 12 Dominican dicks for girls gone wild. Cancel the fucking MasterCard already. Future generations will fucking thank you, I'm Razor Fist. God, fucking speed. Take the world beyond the